Welcome back to Advanced Training, Character Modeling Part 5. We're going to slow it down a bit in this segment to show you how to create a believable eye for a game character. We'll start with a simple sphere, but make sure that the center of the sphere, where all of the edges converge, is at the center of the eye in the front viewport. Now we're going to select the faces where basically the pupil of our eye would be, all the way into that center point of our sphere. So we're holding down shift at this point and just selecting all of those faces. The first two rings that we selected we were able to select by holding down shift and then double clicking to select the edge ring itself. In this case, we're just holding down shift and selecting each individual polygon until we get them all. Now we can just delete them, creating basically the pupil of our eye. Now we'll select the interior edge ring by double clicking it. We'll go to the modeling toolkit and use the extrude tool to give our iris some thickness here and just line it up in the front viewport here. And then we'll pull it back into the eye. Now we're going to select the original edge ring again and we're going to use the bevel tool. And basically we'll give it a nice rounded shape for our iris. We'll also add some subdivisions there. And that gives us the basic shape of our iris. Make a few adjustments to the thickness. Okay, so that just about does it there. So what we need to do now is delete the back half of the eye. So we're going to hide the head and then we'll select the eye and go into face mode and delete just the back faces of our eye here because they're really not needed. You'll never see them. It's always good to be efficient when you're doing a polygon model for a game. Delete faces that you'll never see. Now we're just going to create a plane here and we're going to put it right at the center of the eye and we're going to use this kind of as a back plane so that you can't see through the eye. It's going to basically represent the back of the eye. So we'll just position it into the interior of the eye here. That looks pretty good. Once we've got it positioned we're going to use the mesh smooth tool to subdivide it a few times. And we're going to set it so that it creates uh, only sharp edges, not sharp corners. And that will actually round it out so it's more of a circular shape. There we go. And now we can scale it a little bit so that it matches the size of the eye. And then we'll go into vertex mode and just tweak those verts to give it more of a rounded shape. Though this part is probably not really necessary. We could have left it flat because you're not really going to see that in the final game character. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just tweak it here by rounding it out, pulling the verts towards the back. We'll do the same thing for the verts around the center vert there. We'll just go into the back side here of the eye, grab them and pull them back so we get more of a rounded bowl shape. Uh, more like a real eye. It's probably not really important, like I said, for the final character, but it doesn't hurt to have it that way. And now we can just select both shapes, the interior part of the eye and the exterior part of the eye, and we'll just use Mesh, the Mesh Combine tool. Again, found in the Mesh menu, Mesh Combine, and that gives us the main part of our eye. Let's go ahead and uh, unhide the head and see what it looks like. Looking good. Eventually, when we're ready to animate the eye, we'll actually create a blend shape that we can all create our cat slit type eye that we animate to and from, which will be great. But for now, we need to first add the cornea part of our eye so that we can actually have reflective surface that runs across the front of the eye. Because right now, we wouldn't be able to do that with the hole in the eye there. So we're going to give it an actual cornea. And we're going to create a sphere shape here that matches the basic shape or size, I should say, of the main part of the eye, once again. And then we'll just drag it into place and scale it up so that it's slightly larger, actually, than the main part of the eye. So that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to go ahead and delete the back faces, just like we did with the main part of the eye, because those will never be seen. So go into face mode, just draw a box around those faces and hit the delete key. Make sure you don't delete too many, though, because if the eye rotates as it does, you may see that those faces are missing. So you want to keep some of those faces. So I wouldn't delete them all the way up to the center part of the, the sphere, the halfway part. So again, we want to make this cornea slightly bigger than the main part of the eye. So we can see here that it's, it's not exactly the same size. There is a little bit of a gap between it and the eye there. 
And now we're just going to select this center vert and use soft select and make some adjustments to the size of our soft selection and just tweak it until we get kind of a bulge for our cornea, which it does kind of bulge out just ever so slightly in front of the iris there. You can see here now in the soft select tools, I'm actually going to adjust the fall off of my soft select here, the curve. So I get more of a rounded curve, not so much of a slope. And so now we can drag those verts out to create the bulge of our cornea here. And that's just about going to do it for the modeling part of our eye creation. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and apply the x-ray mode using my little Mel script here to the cornea itself. And that gives us an actual idea of what the final eye is going to look like because our cornea will be transparent. The only thing that we'll see on the cornea will be the specular highlight. Looks pretty cool. All right, so before we go any further, we need to make sure that when we move the eye, when we animate it, it doesn't stick out of the side of the face because we did add some thickness with the cornea. So we'll parent the cornea to the eye itself, and that can be done by pressing P on the keyboard when you select them both. And now we'll rotate it around, and we do see the cornea does stick out a little bit, but we aren't seeing any of the missing faces at the backs of the eye, so that's good. But we are gonna need to adjust the mesh of the head to correct for that. So once we've done that, we also need to make sure that the rotation point of our eye is in the proper location. We need to change the pivot point, which is done by pressing D delete on the keyboard or holding down the D key, and you can adjust the pivot of your eye. And we wanna make sure that the pivot is basically centered where the entire sphere's center would have been so that it rotates properly as if it were an entire sphere. So once we've verified that the eye no longer sticks out of our head mesh and that the pivot point for animation is in the right spot, we're ready to move on to the next step. And that is to duplicate the eye across to the other side. Now, before we do that, we'll wanna make sure that we've properly named all the parts of the eye just by selecting them and changing their name in the either the channel box or the attribute editor. So we can name the eye here. We'll name the eye I underscore R and then we'll name the cornea, we'll name that cornea underscore R. Okay. And now we can go ahead and delete the history. So we have a nice clean construction history here. We'll go ahead and x-ray our eye again because that history delete also deletes that part. And now we're ready to duplicate. Okay, so in order to duplicate it, first we're going to move the eye back to the center line of our character. So we're gonna move it to that black line on the grid. And we're gonna hold down X on the keyboard to snap to the grid and just drag it over until it's right there on the center. Now we're gonna go ahead and freeze the transformation so that it translates X, Y, and Z are all zero again, and then move it right back into place. And that gives us a new X translate value. You can see there it's negative 8.5 in the attribute editor. So now we'll do edit duplicate special. We're gonna set it to instance so that the right eye is an exact copy of the left eye and any changes we make to either one will affect the other. And of course, we're going to change the X translate value here. Now, rather than setting it to the opposite of negative 8.5, you'd think that 8.5 would work, but that would just move it right back to the origin. So what we really wanna do is we want to basically double that value and then instead of negative, we'll make it a positive number and that will move it all the way to the opposite side where the eye would be on the right side or I should say the left side of the character, the right side of the screen. So we can see there the value being about 17. And now they're exactly opposite each other and there's instances of each other. So any changes you can see as I rotate one affect the other there, it rotates as well. <laughs> 